So good morning, everybody. Welcome to the, is it good with the sound for you? Yeah. Welcome to the Global Academy 2 conference, examples of transcultural exchange. I'm very happy you are all here, finally. <laughs> um, Oskar Kok Kokoschka founded the International Summer Academy and this conference is part of it in 1953 as a humanistic and pacifistic project. From the very beginning, it had two characteristics which, are, which, which we are still following. First, Kokoschka invited students from all, and teachers from all over the world, which was at that time Western Europe and North America. And his approach at that time was very exceptional because all the art academies in this part of the world were very provincial and only teachers and students uh, from the, uh, the local uh, field were studying and teaching and the teachers, many of the teachers still were uh, old national socialists. The second co characteristic was that everybody could study. So artists, art students and also amateurs. Today we have uh, students have to apply and the professors or the teachers are deciding, deciding whom they can take. And uh, there are still uh, amateurs, formerly called amateurs, studying with us. It's two-third artists and art students and one-third people who uh, practice art all the time but who uh, have another job to earn their living. We have, this year we have 18 courses and people from 50 countries uh, studying with us. So you see, uh, uh, since Kokoschka, the world became bigger and bigger, so to say, uh, and now we are really trying to be a global academy. For the past several years, the International Summer Academy has been leading the project Global Academy, perhaps we will name it, rename it after this conference in Planetary Academy, which is probably the better word for it. Uh, and for us, as we see each, uh, ourselves as a Global Academy, it has been very important to go deeper into this global, uh, global discourse and post-colonial discourse and to get to know better uh, the global art field. Uh, what we do in this Global Academy project is we do research, we do travels, and we do lectures every year, lecture series. We build up a uh, library, and from time to time we do these conferences. The conferences started in 2011 with the conference which was proposed and curated by Sabine Bifogel, who, will, who is also here with us um, these two days and will be on the last panel. Uh, and it, the conferences continued 2016 with the conference called Global Academy. We would name it Global Academy One now. And it was focused on like alternative academies in the global south. So the main focus of this global academy project is how to teach and how to learn in the global art field. And this conference uh, we did together with Kimberly Bradley. Uh, it's very important and it has been very important to work with you in a dialogue because I think conferences like this uh, I can only do in dialogue with someone else and it gets much better uh, when I do this. And so Kimberly will tell you now something about this conference. Hi, I should probably introduce myself. I'm Kimberly Bradley. I am an art critic, but also an art journalist, which means I write for the mainstream press, for example, the New York Times or Monocle magazine, and for a number of art magazines, uh, Freeze, Art Review, um, kind of everybody but art form is how I usually say that. Um, I also taught for two years here at the Summer Academy. I taught the art writing course. Um, and about a year ago, I was finishing up my course at the Summer Academy. And the last day of class, Hildegun came into the classroom on the top floor of the fortress. 
um, and asked me who I might know who'd be appropriate for a global academy conference similar to the one I attended two years ago, the one she just mentioned. Um, the keywords this time came from Hildegund, negotiation, translation, going beyond the binary, which is how we came up with the panel. About five or six names popped into my mind. Hildegund knew some of them and didn't know some others, and that's how this began. So in January, we sat in Café Brücke in Vienna for hours, I think, <laughs> hashing out a concept that touches on what we felt was missing. A close look at concrete examples of negotiation between West and non-West, global North and global South, but also considerations of exactly these binaries that we in the Eurocentric art world categorize and organize our lives into. Um, how, do, how can we think beyond dichotomies? Who decides how decolonization happens? Or canonization and writing or rewriting art histories? Where is this happening and who is allowed to do it? Once we distilled our ideas, we began inviting the speakers you'll hear today to present their activities, artistic practices, academic scholarship, and experiences, which are in various stages of evolution and have encountered widely varying obstacles. You'll hear a broad range of ideas over the next two days, so primary presentations are kept to only 15 minutes each. The conference will follow a somewhat traditional structure, but with some unusual components. And Hildegun will begin by explaining the more traditional panels. Yeah, did you want also me to present myself? I always think everybody knows me. <laughs> it's stupid, but I'm Hildegund Amanshauser, the, the director of the Summer Academy, and you can find other things in this uh, booklet, for example. So the conference is structured like this, that we have a keynote lecture from Shuda Bratas and Gupta now, then there is a break, and then we have two panels in the afternoon. We call them sections. So in the uh, initial idea was to have always four speakers giving 50-minute presentation and then have a discussion on the panel and then opening it up to you. Now, if... Uh, uh, Barrois de Cavell cancelled, but we have, in comparison to this booklet, a special guest <laughs> or a secret guest, Renzo Martens. And so the panels will be five, four, three, uh, because Renzo is also in the first panel and uh, Eva is missing in the last. Yeah. I'll talk, about, I'll talk now about the unusual components. Um, beyond the presentation-based sections and final wrap-up panel, we decided to stray from the usual conference symposium format by adding these new elements. The first is Pecha Kucha. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. It's a Japanese format in which 20 images are shown for 20, sec uh, 20 seconds each, explained by the presenter in this super tight time frame, which comes in at just under seven minutes. Um, the reason we did this is to pick up the pace of of the days, we've got a Pecha Kucha at the end of the day when people start flagging that late afternoon phase. Um, but we also wanted to expand the participation list beyond the usual suspects and get feedback from really young or perhaps unknown uh, people. We put out a call, an open call, was it April? Um, we got a bit over 30 applications, Hildegun, I, and Simona had kind of long deliberations as to whom would be accepted. We have eight speakers in two different sections, one today, one tomorrow, four times each. Um, we chose them based on the strength of their projects, of course, but also where they're coming from in every sense of that word. So we have geographical distribution, uh, but the projects are all very different, and they're a mix of curatorial, artistic, institutional, <coughs> or academic approaches. We also have two observers watching you this whole time, or watching us. Um, this is also unusual, perhaps. They are Christina Bogdan, who's an art critic and a curator from Bucharest, and Martin Herbert, who just finished teaching the art writing class at the Academy, is a very prolific art writer and an editor, my editor at Art Review, one of the best in the business. Don't want to embarrass you. Um, what they will do is watch kind of from an outsider's point of view, what's happening, and pick up and tease out the main topics that come up. We moderators are a little bit too involved in moderating over the course of the days to do this. And so you'll see presentations from them summarizing things, um, asking a few questions. They will also moderate the very last panel. 
Um, I think we're going, you have the thank yous, but I would like to thank you for allowing me this opportunity. I usually sit behind a desk, or I'm out in the field sometime in refugee camps. I mean, I do regular reporting for the New York Times too. And this is the first time I've done this project. It's been very inspiring seeing the thought that's come my direction. So I'm looking forward to the next two days. Yeah, and what I could perhaps add to the former uh, thing is that we tried to have uh, people from the entire art field to discuss here, so curators, critics, writers, and artists of well, which is very important for us. Yeah, I would like to thank you, uh, you all, but also specific people, and a conference like this is not easy to organize, so I would like to thank you, Kimberly. It was a very pleasant and uh, has been a very pleasant and productive uh, collaboration. And it, for me, it was like a ping pong. Always one uh, 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 smashed the ball and the other took it and sometimes it fell down and then we took it again. Um, and I would like to thank the team of the Summer Academy uh, first of all, Simone Rudolph, who is the manager of all of this. Thank you very much. And she is uh, being helped by uh, Johanna Amlinger and Sebastian Schindler is doing the techniques. Uh, I would like to thank Salzburger Kunstverein and James Kili that we can be here. And of course, also the financial supporters, Federal Chancellor, sorry, it's a difficult word for me, Chancellery, City and Region of Salzburg and you, the audience, but foremost, I would like to thank all the lecturers who come here to discuss with us and present uh, their ideas. <laughs>